G.B. Shaw's freedom belongs to one of the series of radio talks delivered by him in 1935 on the BBC. As it was intended for the larger circles in their capacity as listeners, the lecture seems to be free from the reticle jargon. But Shaw can be very much deceptive in what he says. Behind his humor lies the satire of the contemporary social condition. Not only that, his simple talk was a denunciation of the conventional and capitalist view of freedom. Politically, Shaw conformed to democratic socialism, a variant of Marxism according to which the society should try to reach the socialist political condition gradually by democratic means. The concept of freedom, which Shaw satirizes, was the fundamental principle of enlightenment, and he does so because a capitalist society, according to the Marxian view, can be called completely free in such a condition, in which he will be able to do what he likes, when he likes, and where he likes, or do nothing at all if he prefers it. He firmly denies the possibility of the existence of such a person as human beings are all slaves to nature. We must all sleep for one. Third of our lifetime, wash and dress and undress, we must spend a couple of hours eating and drinking. We must spend nearly as much in getting about from one place to place from this funny yet inexorable condition of human life. Shaw very clearly moves on to the fact that some of the natural jobs can be placed on others' shoulders. What you do to a horse or a bee, you can do to a man or woman or child. Sort. With this Shaw, however, comes to the immediate social and political condition of the time, in which the concept of freedom derived from the grand idealistic project of the Enlightenment and nationalistic bias produced by the First World War was being glorified and used by the upper class as a means to achieving their self-interest. According to Shaw, the force of the democratic system in a capitalistic state lies in the fact that most actual governments enforce your slavery and call it freedom. But the citizens of the state continue to be duped by the system instead of rising to protest. Shaw terms this unequal relationship as the unnatural slavery of man to man to man. Shaw points out an important difference between the natural slavery of man to nature and the unnatural slavery of man to man. According to him, the first, though unavoidable, pleasure is its fulfillment. For instance, if nature forces us to drink, she makes drinking pleasant. The same is true of eating, drinking, sleeping, and other activities. Shaw introduces this difference and cites examples more importantly to explain the evils of the former in more accurate terms. He refers to a few thinkers like Karl Marx and Thomas More, who denounced this slavery and tried to abolish it. At this point, his explanation of the capitalist mechanism, that is, how the system tries to do people and establish, legitimize, and perpetuate itself, approaches the ideological theories of Althusser and Gramsci. Ideology represents, Althusser tells us, the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real condition of existence. He points out that there are found several ideologies, namely religious ideology, ethical ideology, legal ideology, and political ideology, and political ideology, all of which operate invisibly in the superstructure. Shaw strikes at the very root when he says, Naturally, the master class, through its parliaments and schools and newspapers, make the most desperate efforts to prevent us from realizing our slavery. He explains historically how the British capitalist system has established itself by propagating the so-called glorious events such as the Magna Carta, the defeat of the Spanish Armadas, and Napoleon. Then he explains how ideological apparatuses, to quote Althusser, manipulate the common mass to cast votes in favor of the capitalist leaders. What is more alarmingly effective, according to him, is the educational system, which operates in the superstructure and ends in deluding the master class much more completely. Thus, Shaw explains the difference between the two kinds of slavery and conclusively tells the listener's readers, wipe out from your dreams of freedom the hope of being able to do as you please all the time. For, according to him, people have to remain occupied doing natural slavery for at least 12 hours a day, while their unnatural slavery is controlled and regulated by the legal and administrative system of the country.